Frame generation is a powerful thing for gamers, taking your frames from the 40s to the 100s, improving how the game feels infinitely. However, up until now, that technology has been paywalled by expensive graphics cards, etc. In this video, I'll show you how you can add frame generation to a ton of different games, whether you have an AMD, Nvidia, or Intel graphics card, and it doesn't even need to be the latest generation, such as the DLSS frame generation requires a 40 series Nvidia graphics card, but now, after following this video, you should be able to use frame generation on 30s, 20s, etc. The main reason people are now able to bring frame generation to games through mods is because AMD FSR 3 was open sourced, allowing a lot of people to use the frame generation technology in different pipelines, including making plugins for existing games. The one that I'll be talking about in this video is relatively new, but unfortunately a paid one from Luke FZ. Just before you click off, there is a free frame generation mod that you can use to convert DLSS games to FSR 3 and enable frame generation that way, but unfortunately you will need an NVIDIA graphics card in order to use this one. You'll find it linked down below. This video is just going to really cover the Luke FZ mod or plugin that's compatible with a ton of different games, allowing you to use frame generation on any graphics card. In the description down below, you'll find a link to the Patreon page, where for just $6, you'll get access to the downloads and their Discord as well. And on mods.lukefz.xyz, you'll find downloads for all of the different files here. Once you've signed up and head across to this mods.lukefz.xyz page, you'll find linked down below. Simply log in with Patreon and you'll be presented with a bunch of downloads. If we expand the latest version from the drop down here, we can choose a game that we'd like to use. There's a ton of different ones featured here. I'm quickly scrolling through them. And at the very bottom, we have generics for all of the above. While all of these ones above are technically supported in some way or another, they are essentially just telling you what you need to change in order to use this mod, but you can most likely use it in practically any game. Essentially, you'll need three different zips. If we scroll all the way down to the bottom of this, we'll be downloading FSR 2, 2.1, and 2.2, and in each of these, you'll find their specific download at the bottom, as well as a common files. So we'll download common, save that somewhere, 2.2. From the dropdown, we'll choose 2.1 and download 2.1. And finally, from the dropdown, 2.0, download this as well. Now that we have the common files downloaded and all three different versions of FSR currently supported, I'll be placing them into a folder on our desktop. It doesn't really matter where you put these, I'm just extracting them here for ease of use. So I'll move these zips here and extract them to their own folders. I can delete the zips and now we have everything we need. Let's get to adding FSR frame generation to a couple of different games. If I check my task manager, you can see I have a 3080 Ti, which while it is an RTX graphics card, it doesn't have the ability to use frame generation. We can add our own frame generation support using this mod here. If we select a game from the dropdown, such as maybe Cyberpunk or any of these supported games here, it'll give us specific install options for the game, telling us which version of FSR to use, as well as specific options that you may need to change. In this case, you need to adjust the game files for mods to keep working, but that's really the only support that you'll be dropping if you try and use this in games that aren't technically supported by the mod developer. For me though, as I don't have anything crazy installed, I just need to drop it into the games folder, which is over here. So let's actually have a look at how we install a mod for different games. Most of the time, it's almost exactly the same. First of all, we need to open the game's install directory. So if you have the game on Steam, right click, manage and browse local files. Then in here, if you see the game's launcher, you could probably drop it in here. But in this game, we need to open up bin x64 and now we see cyberpunk.exe. This is the game's main executable and where we need to drop these files next to it. You can usually tell you're in the correct folder if there's a bunch of different DLLs, starting with NV, physics, etc. So to install this mod, as the website says, we'll need to install the common files, which you'll be doing for practically any game here. So common, we'll copy all of these and paste them in here. And also FSR 2.2. So we'll open up the 220 folder, copy this and paste it in here. Perfect. Now we technically have the mod installed. What we need to do now is simply fire up the game. When you do, you'll likely see a new window pop up. So play, there we go. This is the mods window here, telling us that it's hooked properly and loaded. As long as you see that window, then by the time you hit the main menu, the mod will have loaded and created the configuration file, allowing us to set it up. For now, I'll keep playing the game just so we can get a baseline of performance. I'm not sure if my save is still here, so we may need to start again. Well, it looks like it's still here. We'll make sure that on the video tab, we haven't got VSync on and graphics. 
we're not doing anything crazy here like ray tracing, but of course you can enable that and reap the benefits of higher frame counts using frame generation, even if you don't have an RTX 40 series graphics card. Okay, sweet, we're in game and we're setting at a solid, let's say 80 FPS, not too bad. But if we were to, for example, enable ray tracing with, I don't know, almost everything except for the crazy, crazy stuff. So medium seems pretty good. I'll keep path tracing off that is. 20 FPS is a little bit too low. Let's use just ray traced reflections and lighting. 30 still a bit too low. Let's go for maybe 40-ish FPS. Yes, there we go. This is technically playable, albeit a little bit sluggish. So this is where frame generation would really shine. If I were to enable DLSS frame generation, you'll see that it doesn't work as I don't have a 40 series graphics card. So we're still sitting at 40-ish FPS. If we, however, enable DLSS, for example, at quality mode, you should see our performance raise quite a bit. And now we're at a solid 90-ish FPS, which is okay. Let's quit the game. And now that we have, you should see a new file in this folder called fsr2fsr3.config.toml. Open this file with any text editor, I'll be using Sublime, and in here we can customize a few things. Usually you'll check the mods page to see if there's anything in particular that you need to do, but here there's not actually that much. Essentially, you'll be choosing a mode at the very top from default, enable upscaling only, use game upscaling, and replace DLSS frame generation over him inside of the quotation marks, and lower down, if needed, you can fake an NVIDIA GPU, so if you're using AMD or Intel, you'll set this to true, as well as AMD Unreal Engine DLSS workaround. If it's an Unreal game, you'll likely need to set this to true as well. For Cyberpunk, we don't need to do anything in particular, other than just change what we have at the very top with mode. If we have a look at the mods page, you'll see that when we choose these different options, we get different upscalers that we can use. If we set upscaling only, it'll use FSR3 upscaling if we choose DLSS in-game. If we choose to use game upscaling, we can use DLSS or XDSS. And finally, replace DLSS frame generation allows us to use any upscaling. That, of course, is specific to this game, really, as it has a ton of customization with the options. A lot of games won't have this much depth. So, as we can choose to enable frame generation, even if it's not technically used on our graphics card, we can choose to just replace DLSS frame generation, which I don't have access to, with the AMD FSR frame generation, so I'll paste it in, replacing default inside of the quotes, save the file, and restart the game. The next time we get in-game, frame generation should just be working if we turn it on in-game. So play, making sure frame generation is off, we're back in-game with just DLSS quality, and we're at 64-ish FPS. If we were to go to settings, graphics, and enable frame generation, which we replaced the NVIDIA one with FSR frame generation so we can use it on any GPU, we move up to 105 FPS, and the game feels a lot smoother. This is because frame generation is actually working. In this game, it allows us to generate frames from 40 or 60 or whatever, and things are just a lot smoother while we're playing the game. If we were to choose to replace one of the other options, we could use frame generation without having to enable it in the game, but it really just depends on how the game is set up. So already the game feels a lot smoother, but as you'll notice, a few things are a little bit weirdly jittery, such as in-game icons. When we look around, they're only really performing at the actual native FPS, even though the rest of our game is being smoothed out by FSR. This is because of how the mod works. Some games are rendered differently, where the base of the game is rendered, then the UI that sticks to the screen, and icons in game, and depending on where this mod is able to inject the frame generation, it'll have different effects on UI and other things in game. Cyberpunk is one of the better ones in that when we look around, there's not too many noticeable issues, such as UI on the screen is sticking around just fine, but some things are rendered at a different layer, so they're running at 40 FPS, while the rest of it is really smooth at 90. One of the other things you'll notice with a few games is if you have certain post-processing options, such as vignette where the corners of your screen are darker, if you turn around too quickly, you'll notice this weird border as it's smoothed. As this frame generation integration isn't built by the developer, instead it's replacing a different function, it's running at the incorrect layer, meaning that it can only do so much. Some games you'll get better results than others, and in Cyberpunk it's not all that bad. We're getting many smoother frames, although certain icons are just a little bit jittery. If you can look past that, then the rest of the game isn't too bad. If that weird vignette distortion on the corners of your screen really annoys you, in a lot of games you'll be able to turn that off. Seems like you'll need a mod to do it. If you were to install that mod, for example, that weird glitch would go away as 
we wouldn't have that anymore, meaning that the game should feel a little bit smoother. Obviously, there's certain trade-offs with different games using this mod, so I'll give you one more example, just so you can understand the process a little bit more. Let's choose a different game, and I think I'll be using Ready or Not. This one doesn't have a frame generation option in-game, so we only have these three options, which is default to use FSR 3 upscaling, upscaling only, and use game upscaling. So once more, we'll be opening the game folder, then in here we'll drill into Ready or Not, Binaries, Win64, and in here we have the actual game file. We'll head back to our FSR folder, we'll copy the common files into here, and now we need FSR 2.1 for this game. So 2.10, copy and paste. There we go, the mod's now installed. Let's fire it up to generate the config file. We'll choose DirectX 12 here, not that I think it really matters, and there we go, it should have already generated. In fact, I think let's just quickly do a test without using frame generation, so I'll delete the files that we just added, so we can get a performance difference. The main file to stop it from working would probably be these WinMM files here. I'll delete them, and the next time we fire up the game, we shouldn't have any kind of upscaling added by this mod. So we'll head into single player, practice, and we can get an idea of what performance is like. I think there is some kind of upscaling enabled by default, or at least with my options. So let's make sure that's turned off, advanced, vsync off, frame limit off, and we'll just raise the quality of everything so we drop a whole bunch of FPS. FSR is off, DLSS is off, perfect. Let's apply and get into one of the maps. And when we get into the actual level, a solid 120-ish. Let's see if we can make it perform a little bit worse. I don't think there's much we can do. So actually the headquarters here is a better option for showing frame generation as it's just a little bit heavier. If we, for example, just stand around, we're sitting at a solid 95-ish FPS. Let's see just how high we can push this. If we were to enable DLSS to quality, we move to a solid 123 FPS, ultra quality 135, or FSR 2 quality 119-ish FPS. Let's replace the upscaler with frame generation and see what our performance is like. So we'll quit. Once again, copy the files, FSR 2.1, fire up the game to generate the config file, then close it, sort by date modified, and edit the configuration file, where we can make sure things are set up as we please. As we don't really need to do anything, we can just use FSR 3 upscaling with the default option that also gives us frame generation. I'll leave it as default, and everything else here is fine. If you're on an AMD or Intel card, you don't really need to worry about anything here, as we can use the FSR option in-game to get frame generation, so we don't need to fake an NVIDIA graphics card here. This option is only really if the game only offers you DLSS, which we can then enable this, choose DLSS, and it'll actually use FSR2 as well as frame generation. So with everything as is, we'll restart the game. So now if we head into options, graphics, and on the advanced graphics tab, enable either FSR2 or DLSS, set them to any option. So for example, let's go FSR quality, apply, and head back to the spot where we had low FPS, we're now getting a solid 180 FPS, meaning that frame generation is working perfectly. If we instead choose DLSS Ultra Quality instead of FSR Quality for slightly less upscaling, we can apply, and now we're sitting at a solid 170, which is still way more than we had previously with DLSS upscaling. If we look around quickly, you can see things are working pretty good. There's no weird artifacting with our HUD, such as the little man in the bottom left, and frame generation is working exactly as we would have hoped. It's generating frames, raising our FPS from 40 to 100, from 90 to almost 200. It's working really well in this game. However, certain games will have different pipelines. So for example, if we choose to use AMD FSR instead of DLSS, at any option, you'll see that when we get back in game, because things are rendered on a slightly different layer, when we look around, there's very weird things happening with the little man in the bottom left corner. So if you're playing ready or not, for example, you should probably choose the DLSS option to enable frame generation. Oh, also in the top right, there's crazy things happening. If you're playing a game like this, then it would be the best idea to choose the DLSS upscaler to use frame generation and reap the benefits. Otherwise, if you don't have an NVIDIA graphics card and you can't choose DLSS in-game, that's where the configuration file comes in, allowing us to tell the game we have an NVIDIA graphics card, let me use DLSS. We can set it to true, restart the game, and assuming you have an Intel or AMD graphics card, we should now be able to use 
quote-unquote DLSS in-game, getting the UI to render slightly differently on a different layer, meaning that now frame generation works flawlessly. That's one of the weird quirks about this mod and one of the alternate uses for it in that we can add FSR2 or FSR3 as well as frame generation to any game that only supports DLSS. So for example, if you're playing one of the new AAA titles or something like that and it only offers DLSS support, yet you have an AMD or Intel graphics card, you can now actually use an upscaler without needing to own an NVIDIA graphics card. That's really sick. So not only does it add frame generation for any graphics card, it also allows you to use upscaling in any game that possibly only supports DLSS. So that's pretty crazy. Unfortunately, it is a paid mod at this current point, but once you have these files, you can use them in any game. You don't necessarily need to look at the mod information website unless you're specifically trying to learn how to use it for a certain game, etc. You can drop these practically anywhere and they should just work, assuming you get the AMD FSR version correct. And also, as it is still a new thing, I'm sure there's tons of mods being developed that'll come out for free, allowing you to add it with much better support, compatibility, etc. sometime in the future. But for now, if you'd like to get on this train early, you'll find the Patreon linked in the description down below where you can get access and try it out immediately. This video wasn't sponsored or anything, it's just a really cool update to the plugin scene, bringing much better performance to games pretty much across the board, most importantly for any graphics card. So hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.